Right then, moving on to the actual all generation. Firstly, we're going to go into our tutorial mod, source main Java, and create a new package called world, harry.mod.world, and then also create the gen folder inside of here, world.gen, G-E-N, and then create the class worldgencustomors. Isn't going to extend anything, but it's going to implement iWorldGenerator, and it's going to want the generate function, which we'll add in a minute. We're going to need to create a generator for each of these, so private world generator and then put or nether copper or cop or overworld copper and or end copper control shift there to import world generator then we're gonna have to create the constructor doesn't have any arguments but click control space and then get or nether copper is equal to a new world gen mineable open bracket control shift there to import world gen mineable you're then going to want the block that we're referring to so block in it dot all nether dot get deep vol state dot with property block ors dot variant then enum handler dot enum type dot copper then eight out of that bracket so we've referred to the correct block which is our nether or with the variant copper then we are going to put if we go into the world gem mineable class the block count so this is the amount of blocks that will that the maximum amount of blocks that will spawn and it can be arranged from one of your ore up to this maximum amount of blocks for all my ores i put nine that's just for test purposes you can obviously edit this value for what you feel is a suitable amount for your ore obviously you want it to rare you want this lower and then you want the block it's going to spawn in block matcher dot four block blocks dot nether wrap and a semicolon on the end we have to do this as the default is always stone so if our we set our nether or to spawn the nether it would never spawn anywhere as there's only a very very small bit of stone in the nether whereas if we say it's nether rack obviously it's going to spawn everywhere you can then copy this change it to all overworld copper block in it dot or overworld you can either change this to blocks.stone or you can remove it entirely as the default is blocks.stone then one more time or end copper change it to dot or end and blocks dot end stone then you can obviously repeat this for your aluminium ores i'm going to do this off camera back in a minute so what i've done i've created another set of world generators for nether aluminium overworld aluminium and end aluminium i've then initialized them obviously with the same or nether or overworld nor end but then changed the enum type to aluminium and left the block match to the same inside of run generator we are going to have world generator gen, world world, random rand, int chunk x, int chunk z, int chance, int min height, and int max height. Open curly brackets to the end. Control shift o, import java.util.random, and obviously world. So we have the world generator, the world, a random, so it's just something, a random value, chunk x and chunk z which are the location of each chunk, the chance of your ore to spawn, and your ore's minimum and maximum height. Firstly, some checkers. If min height is greater than max height, or, so do two straight lines, which is on American keyboards, it's the backslash, the shift and backslash button, then min height is less than zero, or, max height is greater than the world limit 256 so if any of those happen throw new illegal argument exception choose the string and then this is the error message if this ever happens so i'm going to put all generated out of bounds this should never happen but if it does it'll crash the game and give you the error why now we've checked for everything int height diff so the difference between the maximum and minimum height is equal to max height minus min height plus one now we're going to want a for loop for int i is equal to zero i is less than chance i plus plus so we're going to want to find the coordinates of where to generate int x is equal to chunk x which will give us 16 a 16 long area multiplied by 16 to find the exact block plus random dot next int 16 so place it in a random place along that chunk the z is very similar to this so copy this int z 
is equal to chunk z multiplied by 16 plus random done next in 16. And then int y is equal to min height plus random dot next int height difference. So generate it above the minimum height at a random place in between the minimum and maximum height. And then gen dot generate world random new block pos x y z control shift over to import block pos and that's our run generator function we're going to call this in the generate function which is comes from i will generator so control space and double click on the generate function i like to make it one line we are then going to switch the dimension switch world dot provider dot get dimension so we can generate our or in three different dimensions. Case minus one, colon. So if it's in a nether, we're gonna run our generator. We're gonna call or over no or nether copper world random chunk x chunk z. The chance you want it to spawn. As, once again, you can make each of these values what you want. I'm going to put minus 50%, so it's very obvious where my R is. And then the minimum height, so the where the lowest you want to spawn. You could do a common R that spawns quite high, or a really rare R that spawns quite slow. I'm going to do 0 to 100, once again, to make it very obvious where it is. Then break, put a semicolon on the end of that. Case zero this is the overworld run generator or overworld copper world random chunk x chunk z 50 0 100 case minus one the end sorry case one which is the end run generator or end copper world random chunk x chunk z 50 0 and 256. We do this in the end, as the end, I'm not exactly sure where the end island is, but we just put it all the way between 0 and 256, so it definitely spawns on the end island, which is only like a 20, 30 block high structure anyway. If you know the exact coordinates of the end island, I'm sure you can put it in between there if you want, but it shouldn't spawn anywhere except end stone anyway. I'm also going to call this my aluminium, so I'm going to be right back after this. And there we go, I'm now running the generator in each of the worlds. Obviously we need to call this somewhere. Go back into our util handlers, registry handler. Unfortunately, I've, I've already tried, there is no subscribe event for all generation. So we're gonna create another thing down here. Public static void other registries has no arguments. And we're just going to call everything that will go in other registries. So game registry dot register world generator. Um, a new world gen custom ors and a mod generation weight of zero. This mod generation weight refers to a weight to assign this generator. Heavy weights tend to sink to the bottom of the list of world generators. So they run later. If you want to use that, there is really no need to, but if you have a, a use for that, then feel free to change this number to something. But anyway, we have other registries. And for the first time since the first episode of the series, we're going to have to go back into our main class and we are going to call um, registry handler dot other registries. So everything we put in the other registries will re run in pre-init. Most things run in pre-init anyway. Theoretically, now if we run the game, it should work. We're going to have to create a new world as all's won't spawn in an already generated world. So to create your own new world, make sure it's a normal world, not a super flat. I've dug down here and I have found our ore spawning in the world. As we're going to see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them spawning. So it's a number between one and nine, which we specified. And it spawns in our world. We have to go to the nether now. Here we are. If I've just exited my nether portal and we find some of our nether copper ore spawning in the nether. I call it's called fiery, fiery copper ore. By the way, I don't know if you you probably, probably haven't seen this. The way I created the net, this texture, I went onto the norm, my normal ore. I copied each of the small pieces 
and then pasted the whole thing onto a piece of netherrack. And same for the end, I pasted that whole thing onto a piece of end stone, and it looks really cool. I'm going to quickly go to the end now. So once we get there, I'll show you guys again. Here we are in the end. As you can see, I found some of our end aluminium ore, as well as our end copper ore. I forgot to show you some of our aluminium in the nether, but there definitely was some. It wouldn't be spawning here if it wasn't spawning in the overworld and nether. So that's all good, all our ores are spawning in the world. Thanks for watching this video and the previous part of this tutorial as well. I, and subscribe if you're excited for more tutorials, we're going on to more complex things. Thanks for watching, my name's been Harry, and goodbye. <laughs>